Hey everyone, lots of stories in the news this week. Joe Biden promised a billion dollars worth of high-tech military equipment to the Ukrainian army, albeit with the one stipulation that they have to collect it themselves from Afghanistan. Boris Johnson announced that asylum seekers are going to be processed in an overseas detention centre hosted by the Rwandan government, which if you're an economic migrant travelling from Morocco or Libya, essentially means that the Prime Minister has achieved the Guinness record for the world's largest game of snakes and ladders. The key point, albeit often unmentioned in this story, is that it's not actually aimed at all migrants, it's literally just for those travelling to the UK unlawfully. In other words, the ones that wash up in a beach after using a raft to travel to Kent from the implied humanitarian disaster or genocide unfolding in suburban France. Albeit talking of which there was a wave of violence in France this last week after the first round of the election meant that next weekend the runoff vote will be between Emmanuel Macron and Marine Le Pen. It's a very modern attitude, young people don't get their own way this time so they shout and smash the place up like a petulant child. One Mélenchon supporter said of the upcoming vote, quote, it's like choosing between the plague or cholera. Or as a tourist in Paris would say, it's like choosing between walking up the stairs of the Eiffel Tower or having to pay 20 euros to take the lift, all whilst shady characters try to pickpocket you and sell you rubbish. And that's just the local French politicians. Boom, boom. Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak are still holding out, despite being fined over the party gate fiasco. Lack of morals aside, their lies and excuses are frankly ridiculous. It's as if Fred West had tried to play innocent by claiming he'd purchased his garden's topsoil from a shop in Lockerbie. The two of them should frankly have been gone weeks ago, but they're still probably the best two people to have that job. Despite the lockdown boozing, people could probably still name more of colours of wine than members of the Shadow Cabinet. One of the Russian flagships, the Armed to the Teeth Moskva, has been sunk in the Black Sea. The Ukrainians boasted about how their torpedo attack sunk it, although the Russians blame a supposed onboard fire that allegedly hit a munitions cache. Either way, the Ukrainian leadership have said it strikes a hit at the very heart of the Kremlin, which makes them look pretty silly given that the Kremlin is actually a thousand miles away in Moscow, not on a boat. And what a silly waste of an expensive anti-ship missile on a ship that was already sinking. What were they thinking? Hashtag allegedly. And finally, there's a story about a GP who abused 48 patients over 35 years, which is a ghastly story, although at least it makes a change from the ones where the women are under 35. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.